Previously on the bill. He's been done already. You're not over here this morning. I'm going to get it sorted. No, 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 it's not me you want to worry about, mate. It's you. When Ron Gregory is about this, he's going to go mental. yesterday. Chairman Thompson? Apparently. This pub is actually owned by Ron Gregory. Go on. Well, I was beginning to wonder if Phil's on his payroll as well. If he was the one who tipped off Thompson, that we were planning the raid. Gave him time to shift his gear. Well, it certainly stacks up. Which is why I think we should keep this to ourselves right now, not turn Phil over to CIB. I'm hoping if we play our cards right, give Phil enough time, he'll lead us straight to Gregory. All due respect, sir, it's a bit of a risky tactic. I mean, supposing word gets out that we knew Phil was bent all along. I know it's dangerous, but I think it's a risk worth taking. If you're worried about the repercussions, then as far as I'm concerned, we never had this conversation. You know nothing about Phil's connection to Gregory. Just tell him what I can explain. Good, because he wants to know why Jim Thompson wasn't told there was going to be another raid on his place. Oh, he didn't get a warning because I didn't know. Look, I couldn't do anything to stop it. The first I knew Jem had been arrested was when I saw him brought into custody. You better sort it soon or else Ron's going to have to teach you a lesson. Oh! I've made a list of all Thompson's associates. What I want you to do tonight is to organise raids on the lot of them. With a bit of luck, we should come up with a nice result. Keep the borough commander happy. So what about Phil? The moment Phil shows his face, I want him straight back out there. OK, I'll get it sorted. Uh, and I take it you don't want me to have words with him about the blowout at Thompson's? On the contrary. I think you should handle it the way you always would. Last thing we want right now is for Phil to know we're on to him. Well, you could have phoned me. Tell me you weren't coming at least. I did, but your phone was switched off. <laughs> well, that's really funny, because it was on all the time. I was waiting on you. It was when I was trying to get through to you, your phone was switched off. Oh, that's right. I turned it off after I rang you because my battery was going. I must have forgotten to turn it back on again. Gov, just a hip, let's see it. See you. Right, I'll be, I'll be there soon. Serial killer case? <sighs> yeah. So what's going on? Well, I've interviewed most of the drivers, but I still haven't linked any of them to the forensics found in that car. And on top of that, everyone in this station seems to know that Jerry Davis has given Simon Kitson an alibi. So I presume it's official that Simon Kitson is not the serial killer now? <laughs> yeah. So the pressure's back on us to get a result. Look, Duncan, I'm really sorry about last night. Maybe we can have that dinner some other time. Yeah, whatever. Listen, I've got, I've got to go. Yeah, me too. You late in your Sarge? Where you been? Yeah, just chasing a lead. Chasing a bird, more like. Right. Phil, can I have a word? Yeah, of course. Why did you come back empty-handed from Jem Thompson's yesterday morning? Well, I'm completely mystified. Either somebody tipped him off or we were completely unlucky with the timing. But I can promise you, me and Nicky turned that place over from top to bottom. What about the cellar, where all the stolen gear was found? Gov, I'm telling you. I mean, if you don't believe me, you can ask Mickey. We turned the place over. Yeah, well, maybe I'll have more luck with this lot. The Chief's drawn up a list of Jem Thompson's known associates. He wants them brought in tonight. These are the ones who want you and Mickey to target. Needless to say, after yesterday's disaster, we're looking for results. You think this is going to be a good idea? I mean, surely after the raid on Thompson's yesterday, everyone's going to be expecting us to crack down. All we're going to get is just another series of blowouts. Well, that's the risk we're going to have to take. Now, the sooner you get out there, the less chance there is of word getting round. Keep me posted on how it's going. Gov. Hi, Jerry. You can't stay long. I've got to be somewhere in half an hour. Look, I promise you this won't take more than a few minutes. As long as you don't mind talking while I'm getting ready. So how can I help? 
I'd like to ask you a few more questions about your relationship with Simon Kitson. I told you everything last time. What else do you want to know? Well, you said he came to see you on average about once a week. And on those occasions, you rarely had sex. I already told you you had a problem in that department. So you just talked? A lot of books do. It starts off, they want sex. Stuff their wife won't do for them. And it ends up, they just want someone to listen. So what did you talk about? Oh, I really don't remember. Well, all the usual stuff. Work, life. Did he ever talk to you about any of his other relationships? I mean, did he, for example, ever mention any girlfriends or his wife? Never mentioned a wife. You just talk about that one girl, Cass, a lot. I think he was pretty serious about her. I used to say to him, what are you coming to see me for if you've got a girlfriend you're in love with? How would she feel if she knew you were coming to see a coral girl? You never got down to answering that one. Did he ever mention anyone else? Yeah, he used to go on about Pat, his sister. In fact, he went on about her so much, the first six months that I thought she was a wife. What did he say about her? Oh, you know, Pat says this, Pat does that. And then he stopped talking about her. He seemed fed up with her. Fed up? Yeah. I think she was taking over his life. I used to say to him, tell her to move out or you're going to get a place of your own. But all he'd say was she'd be so hurt if he did that. And that was the problem. She didn't have a bloke or any life of her own, so all of her focus was on him. In fact, I think that's why he came to see me, to get away from Pat. Thanks, Jerry. Sarge? This is Mrs. Ruth Shelley. She was caught this afternoon um, in Singh's supermarket by the owner, Mr. Ranjit Singh, stealing two lipsticks, three eyeshadows, and one tin of dog food. Um, this is Mr. Singh's statement, but I'm afraid Mrs. Shelley refused to give me any other information apart from her name. Right, Mrs. Shelley. Could you give me your address and your date of birth, please? Do you understand the question? Right, my love, if you could just sit down over here. <coughs> just take a seat. Just over here, my love. This way. There you go. Park yourself there. Did it not occur to you that when she refused to answer any questions, she might be suffering from some form of senile dementia? Well, I didn't want to assume anything. Don't you think she was doing with three glitter eyeshadows? Well, I don't know. People do strange things. I'm well aware that you're getting married tomorrow. But for the next couple of hours, do you think you can keep your mind on the job? And your brain in gear at least until the end of your shift? Do you mind if I have a look in your bag? Your bag? Just as I thought. It's at Jacob's Hospital. I must have gone walk about for the afternoon. I'll get on to them, see if they can send somebody to pick her up. Sorry, Sarge, I should have checked. Hi. We must stop bumping into each other like this. <laughs> Who are you waiting to see? DC Lennox. He wants to go over a couple of things in my statement. I don't know why. I thought we did everything thoroughly the first time. I take it the investigation isn't going too well. Why'd you say that? Bringing someone in a second time to go over things. That's the kind of thing you do when you've reached the end of the road. Not necessarily. Anyway, I'd better go and get him for you. See you soon, I hope. So who keeps the records for your firm? The controller enters them on the computer and I check everything at the end of the day. Is there anyone else apart from yourself and the controller who knows the password to your records? No. So there's no way anybody could alter the records without your knowledge? No. So have you managed to speak to all my drivers? <sighs> Still interviewing them. Oh, right. Your drivers? Tell me a bit about them. Well, I always thought they were a good, hard-working bunch. But that's the trouble. You can be completely taken in by people. So how's the investigation going? Can't really comment at this stage. Only I hear 
that a witness has come forward who says that Simon couldn't have been the serial killer. Where did you hear that? Well, everyone's talking about it. So, is there anything else you need to check? No, it'll do for now. Well, just call me if there is. Because I want to see this killer caught. I'll check that list now. Thanks. That's fine. You can't leave me alone, can you? Excuse me? Well, you came round last night, and you're talking to me now. Is there anything you want to say to me? How did the interview go? Complete waste of time. I don't think your colleagues are using much imagination. They're not prepared to think laterally, look outside of the box. That's what you think we should be doing? <laughs> of course. In a case like this, one must rid oneself of any prejudice or preconceptions. It's a shame you're not working on it. Why is that? Because I think you'd have cracked it a long time ago. But then, maybe you already have. Will the killer kill again? <laughs> of course. A new witness has come forward proving Simon's innocence. Yeah. I think you're going to have another murder on your hands. If it hasn't happened already. Sorry for bringing you in, but I'm afraid one of our younger PCs was a little overzealous. Anyway, apologies for any inconvenience caused. Bye-bye, Mrs. Shelley. A bit harsh on Luke, don't you think? I know he's getting married tomorrow, but no need to take it out on him. We'll make mistakes, you know. While he's on duty, I'd like him to keep his mind on what he's doing. As far as the wedding is concerned, the moment he signs that register will actually be a relief. An end to it. She said Jerry was supposed to be using her flat to see a client. Papa, turn up. Jerry didn't. Where is it? Here. Hello? No, I'm not Jerry. What time was she supposed to meet you? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, I think that's your problem. Another happy partner? Supposed to show up at seven o'clock, but hasn't appeared. All right, let's start searching the flat. See if you can find an address book. Mm -hmm. Actually, no. Start by checking the numbers programmed in here. Yes. Tony, check that computer. See if there are any emails that might give us a clue as to where she's gone. Right. Duncan, hi, it's Samantha. I thought you should know. Our witness has gone missing. You know, that's the seventh time you've checked that phone in the last five minutes. I've been counting. Look, I'm just waiting for a message, that's all. You should sort out your love life. Look, you should keep your nose out of things that don't concern you. Right, right. Sierra Oscar 84 to Sierra Oscar. Raid successful. We're bringing them in now. One down, four a go. Just so we can wake up for yesterday. I've got Tony and Kerry contacting everyone in Jerry's address book and on her mobile phone. I've got Gary doing a door-to-door -door in the flats to see if anyone heard or saw anything suspicious. So you're saying it looks as if she hadn't taken any clothes with her? Well, I mean, the bedroom was a bit of a state, but it didn't look as though much had gone. And like I said, she left her mobile. Uh, which she definitely need for work. Exactly. <sighs> so yet another woman goes missing who's connected to Simon Kitson, and we haven't even got one lead. Do what was in the What the girl? What's she doing? Sorry, Duncan. I better go and find out what's going on. See you later. <laughs> Phil, 
What? It's him. All you need from Sierra Oscar 5, suspect in view. Suspect entering the house. Go, go, go! Abigail, what are you doing here? Your mate dropped me off. What mate? Taxi driver Pat something or other? She said you called her up and asked her to bring me down here. So what's going on, Mum? Where did she pick you up? She came around the house. The house? Well, did you ask her to pick me up? She told me you did. Go. Um, yeah. We've got a lead on Jerry Davis. Oh, good. Can you wait in my office, please? And you stay there till I get back. Mum, I haven't had anything to eat yet. Um, just let me deal with this and I'll get you something, all right? Well, how long's that gonna be? I'm going as quick as I can. Terrific. Abby, I'm working. Yeah, don't I know it. Wait, well, there we go. And don't tell me you're looking after these for a mate, yeah? Maurice Jackson, I'm arresting you for possession of stolen goods. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which relates to the court. Anything you do say may be giving you evidence. Ron, it's Phil. Look, I got your message. I just wanted to say there was nothing I could do about Jem. First I knew he'd been arrested, he was being brought in. Sarge. Yeah, Mickey, I'm just trying to get on this now. What, are you going to be along? So I've got these car radios to back up. Yeah, OK, OK, I'll be a minute. Right. Look, they're cracking down on all the fences tonight in Sunnyhill. Look, could you just give me a call when you get this message? Thanks. So the numbers on Jerry Davis's phone were punters, but no one had seen or spoken to her today. But we did find the number of a hotel in her address book. Now, it seems she's got an arrangement with the manager there. She was supposed to meet a punter at 8 o'clock. Once again, punter turned up. Jerry didn't. All right. Thanks for letting me know. Do you know if MIT have got anyone else in the frame now that Pitson's clear? Your guess is as good as mine. There he is. The man at the moment. What you got planned for tonight, then? There are no plans. I just thought I'd have a quiet one. Oh, come on, Don't give us a chance to give you a good send off. Yeah, go on. You might as well go out tonight instead of sitting in the hotel room by yourself. All right then, but not a late one, Tony. Vic, you up for a drink tonight? Well, to be honest, I'm absolutely knackered now. Come on, it's the duty of the best man to make sure the groom gets well and truly oiled. Uh, not too well oiled, thank you very much. I don't want to lift up my veil tomorrow and be knocked out by the smell of ten pints of milk. Sarge, up for a few pints tonight? Wish Luke well on his way. Give it a miss, thanks. Come on, Sarge, need someone to look out for him for me. Well, I'm sure Luke's more than capable of looking after himself. I've got some property that needs returning to the Singh supermarkets down in custody. Make sure it gets there before the end of the shift. Craig? If I could have a word in my office, when you're ready. Yeah, I'll be right back, Mum. Thank you. Why does she say she was a mate of yours if she's not? I don't know. I don't know what she's playing at. But what I do need is for you to tell me everything she said. Would you think we can get some food first? This is important, Abby. Well, we didn't really talk about anything. Well, you must have spoken about something. Please, just try and remember. However stupid, however unimportant, just tell me what she said. You really don't care about me, do you? Oh, I haven't had anything to eat tonight, but all you want to do is ask questions. I do care, Abby. That's why I'm asking these questions. I want to know why this woman came to our house. How should I know? Can you just stop messing about? This is serious. This woman is involved in a case I'm working on. I don't know why she picked you up tonight, but I have to find out. That's why you have to tell me every last thing she said. Why well, don't you think it's making a bit of a statement if you don't go out for a drink this evening? It's just not my sort of thing, you know, going on a lad's night out. But if you don't go out with him tonight, Luke's going to think you have not accepted his choice. Gina, I really don't have a problem with this marriage. However, I know that you think that I do. If you say you don't have a problem, then I believe you. I've obviously got the wrong end of the stick, sorry. She talked about her brother a lot, because apparently he died recently and she was telling me how she really missed him. Then she wanted to know if I had any brothers or sisters, what I was doing at school, if I had a boyfriend, it was stuff like that. Did she say anything else about her brother, apart from missing him? She talked a bit about when they were kids. And? What? It's a sandwich. 
Well, come on. Well, nothing really. Just how she didn't get on with her stepmom because she was really strict and snobby. About how her dad used to own some engineering company in the East End. Did she say where? No, I don't think so. But there was some warehouse by the river. She and her brother used to sneak in and play there. And then one day her stepmom caught them and went ballistic, and they were never allowed there anymore. This warehouse is definitely by the river. Yeah. I think it must be near here because she said if it wasn't so dark, she would have driven past it to show me where it was. Okay, now listen, I've got to go out. What now? Yeah, I know it's late, but I I've got to check on something and it can't wait till the morning. So can I go home? No. I'm going to call your Auntie Caroline and ask if you can stay there tonight. What? I need to know you're somewhere safe. Okay? What's happening tonight then? Just a local. Luke, this is your last night of young, free and single. After tomorrow, it's the old ball and chain, mate. We're going to push the boat out. <laughs> I was wondering if you were still going down the pub. Don't you mind, have you such? Well, I thought I might come down for one drink and wish Luke all the best for his new life. You want a lad's night out? Look up your daughters. <laughs> yeah, well, I I'll see you down there. If I'm not back in the morning, I'll give you a ring, all right? I'm going to be okay. It's work. I'll be fine. Now, promise me you'll stay at your Auntie Caroline's until I come and get you. I'll be back as soon as I can. Take care. Cheers, Caroline. Drive carefully. Bye. Cool. You look knackered. Um. I just interviewed the last taxi driver and I've got no idea what I'm going to do next. <sighs> Any news on Jerry Davis? We've interviewed the manager of the hotel she works from. She was supposed to be there this evening. <laughs> but she didn't turn up, did exactly. she? Exactly. Ah. <sighs> you fancy going for a drink? To be honest, Duncan, I'm a bit up to my eyes in it. Ah, come on, just the one. <laughs> All right, just the one. Good, I'll grab my coat. Well, hurry up. I still think it's kids who committed a murder, whatever MIT is saying. Well, let's face it, how many times have got it wrong before now? Do you know what I mean? And this top, she says she was with Kitson the night that Liz Chambers was murdered. Well, what about the rest of the night? And if Kitson was innocent, but why did he top himself when he got bought in? Exactly. The one with a pipe. You know what, if MIT has got any other leads? Oh, come on, you lot. Can't we give work a break, please? Come on, what's up with him? Somebody slipped something in his drink. You getting around him? Yeah, same again for everyone. No, no, not me. Give me straight. Like, I want to remember my wedding day. Same again all round and a triple scotch for the boy. If he don't want a drink, he don't want a drink. It's traditional to get the groom wrecked the night before the big day. Not that you'd understand. And why's that? I suppose you've been to many stag nights. Get drunk, throw up, go home. I think I can get my head round that. Yeah, I forgot to lock it. Lucky it wasn't Gilmore.
shop opened in London in 1920. Business was good and the store expanded and since then has gone from something. She doesn't hate you. It's just the way she is. You know that. It doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. That's because it's true. It's not good enough. Yeah, well, the boys have a good night out, why shouldn't we? I really don't want to get wrecked tonight, guys. Hey, look, it's all right, we'll just have one each. One bottle of peach, me. <laughs> Dear Sunset DC Web, Sun Hill. What are you doing here? We got a warrant to search these premises. We could go inside and uh, start with the living room. I'll tell you what, I'll do everything, Lee Sarge. Excuse me. What do you mean you got a warrant, Phil? We got reason to believe you got stolen property in the house. Tell me what this is about, will you? You will let me in and we'll talk inside. The last time I had tequila, I passed out on the bathroom floor. <laughs> last time I had tequila, I ended up with a Greek waiter and half a Savlaki in my bra. Oh, in my bra! It was dead nice the next morning. Oh. 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 oh, I wish Cass was here. Yeah, I'm gonna miss her. We're all gonna miss her. Yeah. The important thing, though, is if she was here, she'd want you to have a good time. Yeah. Come on. One, One, two, two three. three! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't someone warn me about these roads? The first I heard is when the DCI sent us all out. You doing? I'm letting Ron Gregory know what's going on. The last thing you want to do is let Ron Gregory know what's going on. You go up there and you tell your little mate to stop wrecking my house. I can't. Why don't we just quite let it go for the moment? I promise you, I'm going to get it sorted. Anything? Yeah, I found a load of watches under the bath. Ella Gray, I'm arresting you for possession of stolen property. You do not have to say anything. I'd like to be in your shoes. But it may harm your defence if you do not mention when you're arresting someone and you base her in her own court. What do you think the boys are doing now? Talking about us. Do you reckon? Because every time I ask Luke if he talks about me when he's out with the boys, he always denies it. Women are always much more graphic about men than they are about us. Huh. Yeah, that's true. What's the first thing you do after you've been out with a bloke? Bring your mates up. Give them all the gory details. Like whether they snog like a Labrador. Oh. <laughs> like a Labrador? Yeah, the worst snog I ever had, right, was this guy in a club and he, he licked my face. Oh, oh that's oh, disgusting. <laughs> Okay, okay. Gun to the head time. She always does this when she's drunk. <laughs> Who in the station would you rather die than cut the cake with? Oh, no contest. Oh. Come on, Gina. Who is the least fanciful bloke in the station? Truth. Truth. Sergeant Biden! <laughs> Straight up. Where'd you hear that? He was on the telly, right? There's like an acceptable distance what he can stand from someone. So how do you work out if they fancy you? Well, you lean in, and if they don't move away, you're on. Get out of it. Honestly. I'll tell you who I reckon's up for it. Robbie Cryer. In your dreams. Yeah, well, that's where you're wrong. She got very personal with me the other day in reception. She's like that with everyone. That's nearly as sad as Des Tab and a fancy in Gemma Rose. Well, you needn't look at me. I do not fancy Gemma Osborne, all right? <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Sorry, Craig, not really your cup of tea, is it, talking about women? Well, I'm sure it's the same on the other side of the fence, isn't it, eh, Sarge? Yeah, come on in. Which blokes in Sunhill light like your fire? They got a pass on that one. No, no, no. All we ever hear about is diversity and equal opportunities. Come on, which blokes do you fancy? Nick? Luke? Gary? <laughs> well, actually, Matt, it's you. Yeah, yeah, very fun. No, I know we've joked about it in the past, but you're exactly my type of mature experience. I think I'll go to the bar. Mm. I'm going to get going, if you don't mind. Come on, Nick, you're best man. You're supposed to be helping us lead Luke astray. Yeah, well, I'm sure you can do that. I'll see you all tomorrow. Good luck. See you tomorrow, mate. Bye.
What are you playing at? Ice buns, love. Oh, I think I'll give this one a miss. <laughs> and me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not doing any of your dares, so true. Okay. Have you ever snogged a bloke? Yeah. Um, what are you looking at me like that for? So you haven't always been gay? <laughs> I was 16. I didn't know any better. Have you ever slept with a mum? <laughs> You're only allowed to ask one question. My turn. Truth or dare? Truth. Okay. Out of us three, which one of us do you fancy the most? <laughs> oh, that's unfair. No, it's not. I don't fancy any of you. No, sorry, that's cheating. All right, Dad. Okay. I dare you to come over here and kiss me. Oh. <laughs> No, I still prefer the taste of beer and fags. <laughs> yeah, I think it's time to get our cab. is definitely out of bounds after tomorrow. I was only having a look. Right, well, I've got the bar. Gary, yeah. Now listen, we want to make sure Luke has a night to remember, so we're going to pretend we're going on somewhere else. Right? Yeah, well, we're not. When I get him out to the car park, I want you or whoever to get his kit off and tie into the nearest thing you can find. Not and leave him overnight. Well, we don't want him to feel that we're not giving him a good send-off. I'm going. Right. We're on the move. No, 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 Matt. No, 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 you're not getting out of it that easy. Come on, off we go. This way. Sergeant Biden's planning a little surprise for Luke in the car park. A surprise? So when I take the link, can you help me with the necessities? Are we going or what? Yeah, yeah. Where are we going now? Come on, a little surprise for you, Luke. What sort of surprise? You'll see. Gary! Go on, then. What are you doing? It's not me, it's Luke! I'm sorry, Matt. Slight change of plan. Great! Great idea, I thought. Hey, I thought the back view was nice, but the front view's even better. Gilmore, get me out of here. <laughs> no way. Gilmore! Gilmore! Are you sure you don't want to stay? Oh, Gary, if I don't go now. Yeah, and someone has got to make sure that she actually gets there. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Bye. 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 See ya. Thanks. I probably should be going as well. Oh, you don't have to. I mean, It'd be nice to have some company, and for special occasions, I've got this. You twisted me arm. <laughs> Come on. Brilliant. So where do you fancy going now? I think it's past my bits on. Yeah, I'm me. I'm wrecked. Right. 
You right, walk at the tube because I'll come with you if you want. Come on, that's a joke, said joke. Are we just going to leave him there? Why not? All right. Go on, then. Oh, look, your boy. You're going to be all right getting Luke back to the hotel. Looks like I'll have to be. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Yeah, see, you see you later, mate. Oh, come on, lad, please. Hi, right, mate. Best for a court hotel, please. Get your head getting in. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, what do you know? Didn't even have to ring to tell him I was in trouble. Just opposite, okay? Hello, Phil. What are you doing with him? I've been keeping your lovely wife company for the last four hours. And when you didn't come home, she asked me to bring her down here. You're certainly dedicated to your job. I'm not so sure it's always the job he's dedicated to. Did you receive my messages? I certainly did. All 14 of them. Bill! Good work. I reckon in the last six hours between you all, you've managed to bring in half the fences in Tarnil. Certainly makes up for yesterday's negative result. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. Hope you don't have too late tonight. That's what I thought was the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ron. <laughs> hey, I not now, all right? Maybe in the morning. Cindy, thank you for a lovely evening. Thank you. Maybe we should do it again sometime, with Phil's permission, of course. Just drop in whenever you're passing. You don't need my husband's permission for that. Oh, well, that's good to know. Good night. We'll meet when I'm ready, OK? One off? You actually work instead of being out with some slapper. What happens tonight with you and Mum Gregory? Jealous, are we? Look, I need to know what he wanted. So what's the problem, Phil? Is it one set of rules for you and another for me? Stop winding me up! I don't need this! How am I supposed to get home? I'll call you a cab! Oh, don't bother! You're not walking home at this time of night. <sighs> I can do whatever I like. When I like, and with who I like. <sighs> I feel terrible. Not surprised. <sighs> My stag night. Had a bit too much to drink. Is it? <laughs> oh. oh, how can you do that first thing? So one thing that gets me going. Oh, are you expecting someone? Well, not that I know of. <laughs> Robbie, what's the matter? Carrie, the reception's being cancelled. Cancelled? How? I took the wedding cake over to the pub, right? And they told me that the landlord's been arrested and the pub is closed until further notice. No, no, but they can't. I I've already paid for it and everything. They've given me the deposit back. What's going on? My reception's off. What? The landlord's been arrested and I'm getting married in four hours. I'm going to go and find out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What? 
You're not supposed to see the groom before the ceremony. Well, I think I've had just about all the bad luck I can have for this wedding. What am I going to do? I can't have the reception here. We won't fit everyone in. Kerry, will you please calm down? Calm down? Yes. I will go and see Luke and explain to him what's happened. You know, and we'll sort something out. Like what? I don't know, but what hotel is he in? The, the best for a court. Right. Trust me. I'll get it sorted. Look after her, will you? <laughs> Half three. Hardly worth your while coming home. I had a really good evening. Made a change having some company instead of staring at the telly all night. I'm not stopping you from going out, am I? So you wouldn't mind if I went out with Ron? Do what you like! What's he doing here? Does he know this is where you work? Well, I never told him. for our little chat. Come on. Look, I know what this must look like. Why didn't you tell me they were planning another raid on Thompson's? Because I didn't know they were. You expect me to believe that? It's true. First I knew about it is when I saw them bringing Jem in. Phil, you are not here to get things wrong. I'll sort it. Oh yeah, how are you going to do that then? Just get me to the end of the day. Give me that. You've messed up Nassie end of it. So what are you going to do? Well, I take it you got my message earlier. And before you start going on about how you're going to sort it, it's all right, Philip. Because I've changed my mind for the time being. Sorry, I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, I won't have to teach you that lesson if you do something for me. Which is? Well, you let Cindy stay at my house. Cindy? Yeah. You know, I've been thinking she must get very lonely sitting in by herself every night. Well, I mean, she is a very attractive woman, let's face it, mate. I mean, it's going to waste. Well, what do you want her to do? I've already told you. She's going to spend the night of mine. What, you want to sleep with my wife? So, no way. I'm not asking you, Phil. I'm telling you. OK. But she won't do it. Well, then you'll just have to make her. You see, I knew you'd see sense eventually. I knew it. I'll see you around. Jerry Davis, I've been told to report to DC Lennox. You <laughs> should still be there for right? <laughs> <Before we kiss. laughs> a 
keep it as a souvenir, Sarge. Tony, I'm warning you. Just leave it. I just sure remember it was who came back to release you. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for scaring off my punters. Cherry, we were concerned about your safety. Now, you didn't have to phone all my clients. It was routine procedure. We had to go through all the numbers on your phone to see if anybody knew where you were. I was out for one night. You'd left your phone behind and your flat was in a state. Your flatmate didn't even know where you'd got to. I was selling my story to newspapers, OK? They put me up in a hotel in town and told me not to talk to anyone until I'd done the interview. Hello, I've come to see Luke Ashton. Could you tell me which room he's in, please? I'll just ring up for you. Mm, sorry, I think the phone's off the hook. Oh, that's all right. Just give me his room number. I'm afraid I'm not allowed to give out that sort of information. Oh. Inspector Gold, Sun Hill. Now, could I have his room number? It's, um, room 233. Thank you so much. Three, three. That one. Housekeeping! It's all right, he needs waking up. He's getting married in about three and a half hours. Thanks. Come on! Chop, 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 chop! Gina. So, is there anything else? Or am I free to go? <laughs> Whenever you like. And thanks for nothing. You're welcome. No. Samantha, where have you been? I think I found the murder site. Samantha, this is madness. You think you found the site? I mean, what are you doing? You shouldn't even be there on your own. No, no, no. You listen to me. This is getting way out of hand. I'm ringing DCI Ross and I'm going to tell him exactly what's happening. <sighs> OK, I'll give you five minutes, but you better tell me where you are. I don't really know where it is, Duncan. Can you hang on a minute? I'll check my head's head. Samantha, where are you? Sam, can you hear me? Ah! Next time on The Bill. I found Samantha's car. She's parked up by some old warehouses. What are you going to say to Kerry? What is that when I get there? Please don't tell her. Luke's not here. Where is he? Love you.